Drink beer. Think beer. You're listening to Brew Blood. Education is important, but beer is important to tier. That from a random street sign on some random city that we don't know that Dustin just found this on a Google image search. It's one of those funny, funny uh, craft beer bars out there that decides to put funny stuff on a chalkboard. Uh, many of them do. Uh, my, do. Name, my name is Mark. Welcome to Brew Bullets, episode 99. We're almost to 100. We're inching towards almost. 100. Just barely almost there. Yes, we are using that penis pump. Barely to, almost there. To, no, we're not barely almost there. We're almost, almost there. there. Yeah, we're, we're, Take we're, the barely out of it. We're pumping that penis pump all the way till we get to 99. We're That's true. Almost there. We'll so you've got you to hold it for at least one more week. That's right. We'll be at full girth and stretched out <laughs> length when we get there. Absolutely. And uh, my name's Mark, joined by my constant companion. Constant companion. God, that's constant hard to say. Constant companion, yeah. That is uh, Dirty Dirty Dustin. hey uh, He is... Um, that name applies for many ways in this episode, because we're not only going to talk about you and how dirty you are. That's true. You used to be sweet, clean, beautiful Dustin, but uh, you quickly evolved into Dirty Dustin, the yeah. double D. No one and, on this uh, show knows about the previous uh, moniker, but... Yeah, and nobody needs to. Yeah, they nobody, don't. Frankly, nobody needs to. I agree, yeah. Yeah, so... We're That's talking, a lost time, and we're in a new time. And we're here to celebrate your birthday. You turned 46 yeah. this past week. Happy birthday to you. About to uh, apply for Medicare, getting on AARP's uh, mailing we, list. Well, so we've been on AARP since we're about 25, to be fair. <laughs> That's true. We, but I'm actually going to be able to take advantage of it now. With our with our previous sometimes occurring podcast, we, we <laughs> somehow AARP found us and signed us up for it very quickly. Yeah, the whole podcast. It the was whole really podcast. Weird. Yeah. yeah, as a team. It was just the break room. They did that, and then the they ARP. also signed us up for uh, the DNC mailing list. Mm-hmm. Before we were all Democrats. So uh, we are not only celebrating your birthday today, old Double D, but we're also drinking a beer called Double D, and I brought this back from Boulder, Colorado, from specifically from Avery Brewing, just for this occasion. Very much like Christopher Walken carried the watch. That's right. In Pulp Fiction, and it, I carried it the exact same way. I, <laughs> exactly. Yes. I mean, even though I could have easily carried it in my bag on the <laughs> right. carry on, I decided, yeah. you know what, I'm going to go with the full Christopher Walken, <laughs> shove it directly at my ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And no lube, no lube. <laughs> and keep in mind, I didn't go bottleneck first. Right. You went wide side. <laughs> I, went, I went. I went bottle bottom first into my bottom. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm, lube. I'm sure everyone was like, why is he walking that way? Well, anyone that saw him, now you know. No, no, they all saw. This yeah. happened on the plane. Oh, okay. I was preparing to... You did to, it as you approached. Yeah. Okay. I, I threw my bag in the in the overhead bin, and I said, Crystal, it's time. I bent over, unzipped yeah. the pants. <laughs> You'd it, already brought it onto the plane. Oh, yeah. It, was it wasn't my, even any need at no, all. No, it was okay. in my hand. No, no. Yeah. It, but I decided for the fun of it. <laughs> just for the fun of it. I bent uh, over. I uh, went full, like, downward dog. Yeah. Spread the cheeks. Right. And Crystal... She shoved it in. That's she, a loving she, wife right there. She uh, Oh, there's no love. There was, it was pure <laughs> anger going while she was shoving that in. I allowed her to express She was like, anger. I wanted to sit back down, but yeah. uh, I have to do this. So she was agitated. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. That's why she filed divorce papers two days later. <laughs> Fair enough. And I, that's so why now I'm, neither one of us are allowed no, in your house. That's why I'm sleeping on your patio now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is where we come to you guys yet again yeah, from the, the deck. The old patio cast, the pollen yeah. cast. We're basically the deck cast at this point. I fully expect by the end of the show that I will not be able to speak because of phlegm. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, that's fine. That's fine. No, no big deal. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> we so do today, it for you guys. We're celebrating Dustin's birthday with the uh, Double D from Avery Brewing Company, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Let's talk about urine. Yeah, of course. Because we've already talked about my butt. Let's talk about urine. So, yeah, let's talk about the other orifice. I think it was last year or the year before that. We actually talked about the origination of this, but in Denmark, they're making it out of, a beer out of urine. We talked about last year, the year before, a music festival where they were collecting the urine. <laughs> Uh, from the porta potties, right? Music, it's it's uh, Europe's. I think it's their biggest music festival, and they right. decided they want to go. This one brewery wanted to go totally organic, so they decided to collect all the urine from the music festival, from all these sweaty <laughs> dancing. Uh, oh. Have you been hipsters. to one of these big big music festivals, Mark? I have not, and I refuse to go. Okay, as someone that's been to a couple of them, I will tell you, uh, Cure Vivaldi there. That Cure Vivaldi. Those are about the most nasty urinals you will find. Yeah. On existence. Oh, I'm sure they're on this earth. Eating up with hep C and diarrhea. Yeah, especially if you're there for a few days and everyone's camping out there and then you go in there and it's like, oh my God, this is what death smells like. This is what hell smells like. Yeah. And they reached in there, sifted through all the hell fire that came yeah. out of the bottom because the urine's not a separate area. No. So they had to filter both of those out and get the uh, get the urine out of there. So this is what I, I, I'm assuming they have some sort of urine technology that allowed them to separate <laughs> the, the fecal from the... Uh, there there the has urine? to be something, yeah. Or they just like decided to go in, like they just put it through a strainer, yeah. And like it's it's brown and it's gold, it's golden brown, right? 
There's no set. There's no if it's brown, flush it down. No, it's just all you sort can't of a do gold that. Hue. I mean, that's impossible yeah. in a you know in one of those environments. It is. I I mean, maybe they have some fancy tech, uh, Denmarkian technology that I don't know about. Maybe so. Yeah. I mean, they. Let's be honest. The Danes are famous for their their bottom technology, their bathroom technology. <laughs> Uh, they, are they have advanced porta potties that separate fecal matter right. they're, away they're, from your. They're urine. pioneers in separating yeah. your bodily uh, <laughs> fluids. Right, exactly. Yeah. From from semen to urine to uh, any from the any poo. fluid, yeah, blood, everything. It's all separated. Rampant out. diarrhea from whatever. Yeah. Uh, so they call this bill, this beer a pisner, uh-huh. and I believe it is all. It is a specialty pilsner called a pisner. That is true. Yeah. And it has <laughs> little, little fun with words. As CBS either. says here, huh, a name derived from wordplay on the type of beer and local slang. <laughs> Is, what sorry. kind of uptight nerd wrote this article? <laughs> First of all, is piss a, a local slang just, that's just local to yeah, it's, it's uh, just Copenhagen? Denmark, yeah. Just in Denmark? I think that's pretty universal. I think everyone uses piss that speaks mm-hmm. English language. Mm-hmm. They, they know what that term is. It's not unique. So Denmark's Agricultural and Food Council named the technique beer cycling yep. and said that uh, the pissner could become a trendy, sustainable brew. Right. Uh, the t- a taster, uh, Mikkel, of course, Pedersen, said... Of course, it's a mickle. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a genius idea since it's an, it's an investment in the future. We have a lack of phosphorus, so by doing something like this, the circle is complete. They don't really <laughs> bother to explain why phosphorus is important in this article, because I certainly don't know, and they didn't inform the reader either. Well, they also claim it's fresh and full at the same time, and it's, as good, it, and it's a good beer. Yeah. It's very generic. It's a good beer. Yeah. Like, don't say, well, the phosphorus flavors really bring out these floral elements of this pissner. Yeah. They just say, oh, it's a good beer. So they collected 50,000 liters of human waste liquid. Right. See, I guarantee they don't even say urine. They say human waste liquid, right. which means there was a good bit of diarrhea in that. <laughs> oh, God. 50,000 liters. They said that's enough to make 60,000 like bottles nice of beer. nice pea soup diarrhea and, you know, all oh, those yeah. people were dehydrated. Oh, and vomit. Just blowing it out their ass. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Vomit, diarrhea, urine. Yeah, I think all the drugs and alcohol that are consumed oh, my God. there. There's, they're just vomiting all over the place. There's probably PCP in that. L- oh, yeah. LSD. Oh, yeah. You got all kinds of molly and, the, I, mean, I don't know, mushrooms and everything in there. There's an excellent chance if you drink this <laughs> beer, you're going to get high as... I'll get out. Music get, festival you're waste. Woke. Yeah, you're gonna, your mind is going to expand. You're going to find out what the meaning of life is by drinking the Pisner. <laughs> That's true. From this brewery. That's probably true. And which we encourage. We absolutely encourage. <laughs> uh, let's see. And uh, I should say, if you want to somehow get this beer, it's from a brewer, brewery called. I'm going to pronounce this horribly. Danes, <laughs> Norebro Brigus. And they are doing sixty thousand bottles, so I think yeah. you will be able to get one if you really want to. I think we should. We know, as it so happens, we know a Swede, and the Swedes are right there next to the Danes. That's true. I think we should get one of these and do it for the show. Maybe two. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe four. Maybe we. You know, maybe we should make the circle of life complete here, and we should butt chug them on YouTube. <laughs> Just cycle it back the yeah. other way, and then make it come, do <laughs> that, and then vomit. Then we'll vomit out of that back into a bottle, and then we'll drink that. Yeah, of course, through yeah. our mouth holes. That sounds, uh, you know, about what a lot of breweries are doing these days. Yeah. So, so do, you, do you think this is a good idea, or do you think this is stupid? Uh, you know, part of me thinks if you're an experimental brewery, and, uh, well, not even experimental, but... You're an, you're an experimental brewery? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey. But, you know, if you're a if you're a brewery, you got to do something that stands out, and something like this does stand out, because the craft, uh, craft beer game has exploded so much. There's so yeah. many of the same type of things. Um, so from that element, I can understand it, but at the same time... At some point, we got to just chill it, you know, just chill out a little bit. I mean, we're talking about. I know we also talked about a beer where they swab people's anuses and yeah. stuff. I mean, you know, at some point, it's there like was, there was the beer made from bull testicles, right? And yeah. the rabbit uh, turd beer around here, the rabbit turd beer. What yeah. was the the crap that comes out of whales that is so expensive that people love? Uh, oh yeah, gosh, I can't whale, remember the name of that now. I don't know, whale spunk or something like that. I don't know. Go watch the Bob's Burgers yeah. episode about it. Yeah, but yeah, they made beer out of that. Yeah, they did. Yeah, Grit, grist or something like that. Anyways, uh, that's what yeah. I think. Yeah, for some reasons very valid. That valuable. would uh, you know require some research, and yeah. I don't require, or I don't, uh, I haven't done that. Yeah, and don't require it either. Yeah, I don't require. We it. We definitely yeah. don't require. Well, it I don't show. require it. <laughs> obviously, uh, we're not a show. I've based done on two facts. podcasts that I do no research on. So, um, but uh, yeah, I think at some point it's, it gets to be a little ridiculous. You know, um, I guess if you're brewing it properly and it's killing the bacteria and it adds some kind of flavor and it actually is good, okay, fine, but. It's a bit, and... Yeah, it's a stump beer. It's just like... Uh, well, it's not just like, but speaking of bits, like when Ninkasi shot their yeast into space, did that really yeah. do anything? Or when Probably brew, not. Or when Brewdog uh, brewed a beer under the sea. Exactly. Did that make it different? Yeah. Probably not. No. But, you know, they, they had the money to do it, and they did a yeah. bit, and, you know, it money is what waste. it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would, I would venture to say that 
Ground control. I don't know that ground control will be any different if just it regular had been collected yeast. or had been bred here on Earth or whatever. Exactly. Yep. Right, whatever the proper term is for breeding yeast. Breeding yeast on Earth. Yes. Yes. Brewing, brewing, breeding, fornicating. So I give this idea a two point five out of five. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a stub beer. I yeah. I feel like we had a brief moment, a brief spark, a brief big bang of stunt beers in like probably in the last year, or maybe it was last year. Maybe maybe it was a thing of 2016. Yeah. It's kind of calmed down until now, and yeah. I hope this is not a new resurgence of stunt beers. Like yeah, just I concentrate on making a good beer. I understand yeah. wanting to be sustainable. That's a good angle. We absolutely should be recycling and making. Be as green as possible, of course. Yeah, I agree with that. But I don't know that we need. I don't know. Then I don't again, think taking urine from a festival necessarily does that. Yeah, I mean, if it's us just drinking our own urine, like we frequently arc it into each other's mouths right. when yeah, we're thirsty. Sure. That helps. Yeah. Like we're we're untapped. We're saying, hey, we're thirsty. Don't want to drink water. Not in the mood for water. Let's just arc that it into each other's planet. mouths. Yeah, yeah. It's like a it's like a wonderful water fountain, except yellow. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Because we drink, uh, we take plenty of vitamins every morning just to make it as golden as possible. <laughs> But we don't brew it and sell it to the masses. No, no, we just shoot it in each other's mouths. Like right. a, we're basically like human super soakers. <laughs> Pretty much. It's pretty erotic. It is. And hydrating at the same time. <laughs> Not as much as it should be. It's a little salty. So that was, uh, yeah. That was urine talk. That was urine that talk. That was pissner talk. That was urine cast episode one. Yeah. Uh, so now we should move on to something that's, in theory, not bait, not made out of urine. Yeah. Uh, and that will be the Avery Brewing's Double D... Spice Dale. Dipping back into that every will. Going just back to every few just short episodes after the uh, interview. Now that we've already talked to them, we don't have to worry about that in the future. We That's can true. actually review a beer by them. Yeah, exactly. We could trash this beer now. We could. Now that we got the interview. We will. Yeah. Uh, but uh, after this, we'll talk about Avery Brewing and uh, move on to the Double D Spiced Ale. by Barbaco Apparel. Barbaco Apparel is a San Antonio-based independent clothing line that caters to Texans and Texans at heart. To find out more about Barbaco Apparel or to buy your favorite taco tea, go to barbacoapparel.com. So the uh, Avery Brewing Double D Spice Ale. Now, I picked up this beer when I was in Boulder, Colorado, interviewing Fred Rizzo, and that was just a few episodes ago. You would have heard that interview. And uh, yeah, I picked this up in their tap room. Normally, uh, at this point, we discuss what the brewery is and where they are, but, uh, you know, go, go listen to like two episodes yeah, ago. Yeah, go, go look at, or go look at, <laughs> go stare at Fred Rizzo. You can look at while, him. While, he's, while you're staring at him, listen <laughs> to the interview and just follow him around, around the brewery, just stare yeah. at him very passionately, maybe with dead eyes even, just to make it really creepy. You can listen to them and uh, Don McLean in the background. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so Avery, if you've never heard of it, small yeah. little uh, craft brewery at Boulder, Colorado. Right. Uh, nestled in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Almost as tiny as that uh, craft brewery that's in Golden, Colorado. Yeah, exactly. Which I <laughs> stayed right next to them. Right. Yeah, so Avery, great brewery, known for definitely doing some kind of crazy stuff, as we talked right. about in that interview. They have an Indiana Jones beer that's making these recipes based on, and this is only available in Taproom right now, uh, based on recipes that are thousands, hundreds and thousands of years old. Really good beers, uh, one of which was a Viking-based beer. Right. Named after Ragnar Lothbrok, which was 900 years old. Good beer. And their tap case, some of them are brewery exclusives. I don't believe this one, the Double D, is a brewery exclusive. Right. But some of them that I brought back it's, were. It's specialty, though. It is specialty, because it's, it's definitely not one that we can find in Texas. Right. Uh, mostly what we get here are your standard issue Avery's. We get uh, the White Rascal. They're Maharaja. Maharaja. Um, yeah, there's we get Avery the vanilla, IPA, I believe we get that. The vanilla bean stout. Yeah. Uh, we get, you know, we don't get a ton of Avery stuff. The Jubilation. That Jubilation, yeah. Too. yeah. We don't get a ton of their stuff, but we get a decent representation here in Texas. But this is definitely not one we can get here in Dallas. No, this is not. Um, you know, and recently they released the Uncle Jacobs around here and the uh, Vanilla Bean, and uh, those are a little more rare, um, and I don't know how long they're going to be around, but those would be the most recent ones I've had of theirs. Right. Um, I, I think we were actually drinking them on the Avery rapper uh piece of the i think so uh you know to get an industry term out yeah. there of the uh <clears throat> episode where you did the interview um but you know avery's not one uh and I'm, i believe i said this before too they're just not a brewery i go to very often that doesn't mean i don't like them um i think they're kind of like 
uh, I don't know. They're, they're like so many breweries that come out of Colorado mm-hmm. uh, that are always around, so you know they're always around. I don't think so it's you just, just Colorado. Don't... I think it's they're such an old – they're like a grandpa in the craft beer industry. Right. Game. Well, I, I point out Colorado because they have yeah. so many grandpas. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of Colorado breweries that have been around a while that you're like, well – or, I mean, Oregon, too. They're I mean, like – You could count to shoots, they're Rogue They're like a or Grandmaster something. Flash of hip-hop. Like, they've been yeah, exactly. forever. So you're not necessarily going to seek out – Right. I mean, they're there. You appreciate them. You appreciate the the what the the, the <laughs> you don't want them to leave. Laid. You don't want them to leave. But they you're make, also like, well, they make this some, other thing is yeah. only going to be here for now. They make some sick beats. Yeah, you exactly. like the music. Right. They make some sick beer beats. Right. But as as we want to do, we're always looking for the you know the new freshness. The yeah. You what are the new beats? Are like, well, that beat's only going to be here temporarily. This beat will be here. Somebody yeah, get that temporary right. beat. I've hit that beat many times. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I'm looking for the next. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. Um, but to go over some of their top beers, and these are probably ones you're going to find on the shelves in most places that uh, they distribute. Uh, the Maharaja Imperial uh, IPA. Yep. Uh, the Avery IPA. Uh, Hog Heaven. I didn't realize the Maharaja got 100 out of 100. Or, oh yeah. Or 100 overall. Yeah, the regular IPA gets a 93, uh, 91 in style. Uh, the Hog Heaven gets a 98 and 95 in style. The uh, Imperial Stout, the Czar. Uh, that one is an 11.1%. Uh, gets 99 and 87 in style. Um, yeah, they got... The Mephistopheles, which is now discontinued. Yeah, that one's discontinued. The, the I think the White series. Rascal is also discontinued. No, no, it's, it's White Rascal's still going, I believe. Is it? Okay. I think so. There's a couple on this list that are discontinued. They had a, Unfortunately, I cut had, that part off. They had a keg of uh, White Rascal good friend today. So. Oh, did they? Okay. Since well. I think that one's still going. I think just right. the Demon series, oh, okay. the Mephistopheles and the others are still uh, are discontinued. Okay, maybe that's yeah, maybe that's it. Uh, Old Jubilation uh, that gets a ninety-five. Uh, the White Rascal is the only one that gets kind of a low rating in the top ten. It's a fifty-nine, right? And then uh, eighty-five in style. Um, you know, that's Weed Ale. I, I feel like Weed Ales kind of get kicked in the nuts from they do craft beer nerds. They're so kind of that's overlooked. Probably part of it, much like Box, they're kind of overlooked because they. I don't know. I feel like it's we have, especially here in Texas. We have such a you know a, a German influence. Yeah, uh, so many Czech and German immigrants settled here. That our primary beer styles coming out of here right. have been German-based styles. Oh yeah, absolutely. So as a result of that, the German immigration, we've what we've seen here for a long time are box, uh, pilsners, and hefeweizens, or yeah. weizens in general. Yeah, dunkels, that dunkels. kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's not that it's not a good style and doesn't have its merits. Of course, it's just that I think while we're undergoing this craft beer revolution here in Texas, as everybody is in every state. In the nation, they're seeking out the new hotness. So we're seeking out the new styles. Yeah, absolutely. So yep. you're right. It's kind of an overlooked category. And there's probably some rooms for, for improvement uh, there True. and a little bit of uh, invention, reinvention. Yeah. So, you know, they have a couple more. They have the uh, the Ellie's Brown Ale, uh, the Beast Grand Crew Ale, um, Out of Bounds Stout, and the Collaboration, Not Litigation, my personal favorite name Yeah, uh, that's on the list here. All of those get uh, ratings at least mid-80s up to uh, mid-90s. So, um, you know, they got a couple hundreds that stand out. Um, that's, again, the Demon Series that is discontinued, and then the Maharaja Imperial IPA, which maybe I should actually pick that one up every now and again because I love double IPAs. Yeah. Uh, well, not doubles, but Imperial IPAs. And um, if it gets that high rating, I don't remember the last time I had it, so I should try that. Yeah, it's been a long time for me as well. But today we're talking about the double D's. We are named for Dirty Dustin, of course. Yeah, exactly. And it's funny because we should say your middle name is also Douglas, so you're actually I kind of in a, do- I am you're a double like D. Yeah, D to the fourth power. I don't have a last name, but those yeah. are my first two names. Dirty, Dirty Dustin Douglas. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Douglas is my last <laughs> yeah. name. Um, so yeah, the double D totally fits. Yeah. Um, the ABV has a little bit of a kick on this one. Ten point three. Yeah, ten point three. No IBU. And uh, serve in a snifter. And the description is ale aged in bourbon barrels. As you can tell, we are actually in the patio cast. If you can hear the, the fine Dallas police pursuing somebody down <laughs> Dallas the Dallas police highway. on fire, yeah. There you go. Uh, this is an ale aged in bourbon barrels with ginger added. Number 32. Yes, even lab geeks of the ginger variety can be creative. I thought uh, that was a very interesting, strange description. It but is. that is the commercial it description. Is very strange. Beer Advocate gives this an 87 out of 100. Rape Beer gives it a 90. And Untapped gives it a 3.9 out of 5. That is a high... High, high rating for Untapped. So, what are your expectations on this one? 
Uh, well, a bourbon barrel aged beer. Um, we all we kind of have a base of what we expect from that. We have so many bourbon barrel aged things these days. Uh, always a stout. Uh, well, most of the time, I'm a pretty stout. sure babies are being birthed in bourbon barrels now. Yeah, it kind of feels like that. Uh, you, this is rather than a womb, you age them in a bourbon barrel. This was a little different though because it's a strong ale. It's not. Right. A, it's not a stout, so the the barrel aging might have a different effect on that. Um, strong ales that I can think of, uh, you know, with bourbon a, uh, bourbon kick. Uh, I expect that to be pretty tasty, and I like the spice nature of ginger. That's going to be the thing that might turn you off, but I yeah. enjoy that. I enjoy that spicy kick that ginger will throw into it. So, I'm expecting that liquory taste that the bourbon barrels give, um, with a nice smooth beer. You know, strong ale is kind of it's not bland. That's mm-hmm. the wrong way to say it, but it's kind of a neutral, kind not quite like a brown ale, but kind of in that same family of you have to do things to it to make it interesting. I think. Yeah. Um, so I think. Barrel aging that on top of the ginger kick. I expect this to be pretty good. Yeah, so I expect it to be maybe along the lines of the North the North Coast uh, Old Stock Ale. And with the added demon of ginger. I am a noted <laughs> ginger, ginger hater. hater. I, um, I unless despise Unless you ginger. talk about Ruby Red from Shiner. You enjoy yeah, that. Yeah, I know. It's weird. I, that I can't has grapefruit and ginger. I can't it. explain that. <laughs> Two things you hate normally. I'm, I'm fully expecting to hate the ginger component of this beer. I'm, I'm hoping I can find other things to appreciate, but... I anytime I see ginger, I see ginger, I assassinate it. I shoot it through right. the head. I set it afire. <laughs> so I expect this to taste like a barrel aged, arrogant bastard, right? With a little ginger kick, and if that's the case, I expect to be pleased. Uh, arrogant bastard. Well, they're a strong ale, so that's... they are. But I kind of I know well knowing Avery, I don't expect it to be that harsh. Because Arrogant Bastard is you pretty think harsh. harsh. I don't know. I, th- I, I think it I is I think it's rough. a nice entry beer for craft beer people that haven't it had is, craft but beer. but when I went back and had it recently, I had a bourbon barrel-aged Arrogant Bastard. Yeah. It was pretty rough. Okay. Well, I, I mean, haven't was, had the barrel-aged one that I, I remember. I mean, not that I shouldn't expect it to be called Arrogant Bastard, but yeah. it was pretty rough from what I remembered. And I, I mean, I hadn't had one in years, okay. and I know they changed the recipe. So, Well, that's the best strong ale I could think yeah. of. The most widely available one I could think of off the top of my head. Knowing Avery, I'm expecting to be more smooth than that so okay. i guess we'll find out although it's gonna have my hated ginger that's true i don't like ginger people we'll i don't like ginger the, the substance yeah. yeah you know it's it's like i hate belgians you hate gingers right exactly i just even <laughs> i have most of my siblings are all they all have red hair you hate all of them why do you think i don't talk to them exactly it's because they're gingers right exactly i have one well i have two brothers out of i have four brothers and a sister <laughs> i have two, two that brothers, aren't gingers two that are not gin, uh, gingers and they're the only ones i talk to right exactly i refuse yeah. to talk to anybody else i, I pretty much I want to curse off the rest of them I, exactly and i will not talk to their mother either i will oh, not yeah. she tried to talk to me at a wedding she was like, the ginger leader i put like, that I, I like you caused all this ginger yeah. i'm not talking to you i put the hand in her i didn't speak to her i just put the yeah. hand in her face and, and yeah. pushed her to the ground you pointed to her hair yeah. put the hand in the face took off oh i threw her to the ground i kicked her several times <laughs> in the ribs well yeah of course i i, I beat her with a pickaxe i was trying to be i was trying to get the nice yeah. version no no of the masses I, I, but I'm if you want to be to, honest go for it i'm trying to make it real i'm yeah. keeping it real fair enough yeah, that's what we do on the show we keep it real i'm trying to keep it real i was taken to jail i spent about uh, you know, about six months in Dallas County. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I was... Lou Scarrett over there. That's right. I dominated that prison. <laughs> Did I, you? Okay. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. That's, I, that's I good. Up. That's impressive to dominate that prison. When I first entered that prison, I went in and beat up the smallest guy I could find. <laughs> and that impressed everybody. <laughs> he just grabbed his shrimpy face and just beat the hell out that's of right. him. That's right. I beat the shit out of him. And everybody was impressed. <laughs> that's nice. And I, I shoved a, 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 a beer bottle up his butt. Man. Just to show my dominance, of course, bottom first. Denver travel style. That's right. That's, That's what you the way call I do it. it. That's how I learned it. <laughs> right. That's what I learned. All so right. when I was flying the friendly skies. <laughs> on that note, on the other side, we will review Avery's Double D. Adam Avery, president and head brewmaster of Avery Brewing, incorporated the company in 1993 when craft beer was just beginning to expand in the U.S. At first, Avery utilized only a seven-barrel tank to ferment its beers. But since then, they have expanded and now produce 50,000 barrels of beer as of 2015. In the same year, Avery closed the doors of its original brewery and opened their new $30 million, 67,000-square-foot brewery, nearly doubling their brewing capacity. The brewery produces both year-round and seasonal beers. One seasonal, the White Rascal, Belgian-style white ale, won praise at the 2015 Great American Beer Festival. Avery's top beers include the Maharaja Imperial IPA, a 10.2% Imperial IPA, the Avery IPA, a 6.5% IPA, Hog Heaven, a 9.2% Barley Wine, and the Czar Imperial Stout, an 11.1% Imperial Stout. 
so the BJCP for being stupid. <laughs> we have to talk about something that just happened. In oh the my gosh, this is the most moronic thing we've ever done. This is among the all-time stupid things that have ever happened. So <laughs> while we were taking our little break here and you know rubbing each other's butts and stuff, uh, we noticed a ringing and like a, it was like a real high-pitched, shrill noise, and we couldn't figure out what is going. Is it somebody's alarm going off next door? Right. Uh, we, uh, your friend across the alley there, Jeremy walked all around your house and the neighbor's house. Couldn't figure out what was going on. Oh. I mean, it could be, it could be, he could hear it across the alley. Right. It was that loud. It was that loud. We climbed all over my roof. Yeah. They got said, a ladder out and yeah. both of them got on the roof, <laughs> went to all the attic fans, stopped them all. It was still going, still going. Yeah. We spent what? 20 minutes going through the At least. Yeah. At least 20 minutes. You went up, you crawled up in the attic. Couldn't hear it in the attic. Yeah. Came back out. You got on the roof, come down and, uh, Jeremy comes over and is like, is that your mic? And I thought it was he was just talking about, is that a mic? Like, is that a microphone? Right. But no, he was right. It was the freaking <laughs> microphones causing interference with each other. The guy that's not on a podcast yes. or around audio equipment regularly right. figured is it out the one who figured out that they we were, were causing interference. And put the mic next to the next to the headphones and caused feedback. So we're morons. So we have like a 30-minute delay for really no reason. Yeah, because we're idiots. Yeah. Just absolute idiots. Let's hope the beer is better than our <laughs> brains. Than our brains, yes. So the BJCP4... An American Strong Ale. The overall statistics is that the gravity should be between 1014 and 1024. I don't know what it is in this case. But the ABV should be between 6.3 and 10. We are weighing in at a nice 10.3. So it's a little bit above the normal ABV. IBU should be 50 to 100. We're rocking with a no IBU this time. Right. Overall impression of the beer, a strong, full-flavored American Ale that challenges and rewards the palate with full, malty, and hoppy flavors and substantial bitterness, which I don't think we're going to get here. Yeah. The flavors are bold but complimentary and are stronger and richer than average strength pale and, and amber American ales. Now, in fairness, this one is a straight-up strong ale description. Um, we were tired of having spice or vegetable beer or that right. said uh, varied, by, uh, Fair enough. Yeah, varied by style. So this one might be a little bit more... Uh, a little more obscure than what you would really get, right? Uh, or you know, it might be a little different because we do have ginger, and that's not normal in a strong ale. Commercial examples include the Bear Republic Red Rocket Ale, the Terrapin Big Hoppy Monster, and the aforementioned Stone Arrogant Bastard. All so right. aroma, so aroma, medium to high hop aroma, most often presenting citrusy or resiny notes, although uh, moderate to bold maltiness supports hop profile with medium to dark caramel a common presence. There's definitely some resiny notes uh, in this aroma. Uh, I would say a little bit of hop, definitely resiny. A little bit of citrus, too. Tiny bit of citrus. Tiny being the operative word here. I think it's mostly resiny, though. No, I think it's mostly ginger. That ginger is yeah. overpowering that. I think ginger is what's fooling your nose. Nah, maybe I'm thinking of ginger. I mean, maybe, that, maybe that ginger has a little hop mask on it. It has a tiny little hop ma- domino mask on. And it's uh, it's trying to play Halloween here and, and fool your nose into thinking that it's uh, hoppiness or citrusy. But no, that's full on ginger right there. Okay, fair enough. That's the evil of ginger right there. It tries, <laughs> since, you, since you hate it, uh, it you would be able to note it a little bit Look, easier. Look, my nose like is super sensitive to, right. the, to the gingers. All right. The gingies. The like gingers? Yeah. The ginge. I mean, it's lightly floral, but I yeah. think ginger is dominating that by far. Okay, well, I guess I think of ginger as kind of a resiny aroma, so... Okay, fair enough. It's I mean, ginger. Uh, the appearance... Yeah, apparently it's definitely well. It, it appears to be filtered. Uh, it's very, very uh, carbonated. Yeah, this uh, medium amber to deep copper or light brown, moderate low to medium size off white to light tan head. It may have low head retention, good clarity, and I would say that clarity here it's somewhere between cloudy and clear. It's pretty close to clear though. Yeah, it's for close, most but it's but it's somewhat like the one I've got right now. There's a bit of cloud, but. Is somewhat hazy. It's it's not a full a little on, haze, but I'm just saying it's it's definitely not completely unfiltered. No, no, it's somewhere in between. It's um, you can't completely see through it, but uh, there's some clarity there. The coloring and the head retention all fit in style. I would say. Yeah, uh, it didn't pour like a big foamy head. It poured a just a kind of even uh, right. low head, uh, small head to it, but it's retained. By, I mean, again, we went through a whole attic. Climbing exercise, <laughs> roof climbing exercise, about 20 minutes. We and climbed all over a roof for we, no reason. Yeah. We poured this right after the break. Right. And went through all that. It still retained its head almost 20 to 30 minutes later. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah I would say head retention is quite well done here. Absolutely. I agree. So, the uh, most important things, flavor and mouthfeel. Mouthfeel should be medium to full body. An alcohol warmth may be present, but not excessively hot. Uh, flavor should be medium to high dextrous malt with a full range of caramel, toffee, dark fruit flavors. Low to medium toasty, bready, and or mallard rich malty flavors are optional and can add 
complexity. I don't know what mallard is. I'm, I don't know either. I'm familiar with the I don't know what a mallard is. I'm assuming that refers to a duck. Yeah, exactly. It can taste like a duck. Medium high to hop high. <laughs> high hop bitterness. Of hop high. Now, Mark, you're going to hate this beer. Oh, I know. I haven't even tasted it yet. I tried it slightly ahead of you. All right, yeah. Ginger notes are kicking. You're going to get a lot that's of ginger. A, that's quite the street slang term you're rocking there. Yeah, kicking. You like that? That's what, that's what the kids say. <clears throat> so it's very high in the ginger. Uh, I would say the ginger... Very... The ginger almost dominates everything else. There's yeah. a little bit of uh, a little bit of hop notes in it, but man, if you don't like ginger, you're gonna hate this beer. <laughs> yeah, it is not. I mean, I'm gonna have to smash this in the face of a, of a ginger human because this is just not my flavor. This palette. is ginger's uh, home for sure because this is what your stepmom will be drinking. This is what your siblings will be drinking because this fits their profile because this is very gingery. Uh, this yeah, this is a uh, man. This is just not the beer for me, and I, I fully expected that going into it. So I'm gonna. Tr- when I get to my final score, I will try to rate this appropriately, knowing that it was going to be a ginger beer. I I, I almost didn't want to bring this home, but I was like, yeah. it is named after my friend, <laughs> Dirty Dustin. Exactly. So I feel like I have to bring it home. We have to experience this. And, you know, for me, um, it's interesting. When you, when you taste it, the ginger pretty much co- coats the entire palate. Like, right. there's not... You get a little bit of hops on the back end, just a touch. Um, there's not really any front end except for ginger, so it's like ginger, a little bit of hops. That's it. Yeah. Uh, barrel aged strong ale. Uh, barrel aging, you probably get a little bit of the alcohol bite to it um, from the barrel age, um, but it's not. You know, if, if you're if you're hating on the ginger, you're not going to note a lot of these other things. But I, I would say it's tough. Yeah, I would say there's definitely a barrel aged note to it. There's a little bit of a. You know, that little bit of bite that barrel aging does gives you a little bit of that liquor that liquor burn. Not too much, but just a little hint of it. See, I, I think conversely, I think the barrel aging here has smoothed it out some. Like, if you talk about straight up raw ginger like uh, a um, Moscow mule, right? I can take one sip and I'm done. It's just, well, it's too sharp, it's too biting. I feel like here, the, the barrels of the agent has rounded out the flavor, the back end. Now, yeah, to me, yeah, maybe the ginger it does, but the ginger doesn't come at me as hard as it comes at you i'll put it that way yeah. so for me i can almost taste the uh the strong ale barrel age underneath that yeah and for me that's the part that has a little bit of an alcohol uh touch to it and then uh, other than that you do have the ginger front end would you say it's hot as far as alcohol goes not super not scorching Maybe a little warm it's like a little like i i feel that like it you know, yeah. like like, touch like a baby's stuff. finger shouldn't touch it, but an adult you could probably leave it on there. And for, it should be known you do have baby hands. I do, yeah. But you, adult you could leave it there a yeah. little bit. You'd be you okay. have normal sized arms, but baby hands. Yeah, it's really weird. Some humans they <laughs> suffer from baby arm. Yeah, I just hands. said baby hand. Baby yeah. hands. Trump has large hands compared to me. Okay, <laughs> yeah, which is saying quite a bit. <laughs> right, it's like newborn fist. Right, basically. Yeah, but yeah, to me, yeah, the ginger is is super present, but. Um, I just I think there is a little bit of an alcohol bite to it, just a little bit. Yeah, not not a hard like a maybe like an alcohol nuzzle. So I'm going to change it from alcohol bite to alcohol nuzzle. Yeah. Okay, so it's not as bad as I expected it to be, just because <laughs> ginger is not my flavor. I hate, I. It's not your flavor, not your color. Like I occasionally like occasionally I like ginger in certain things, like stir fry. I think it works well as long as it's not dominating. I think ginger can be an okay component as long as it doesn't dominate. Right. But the problem is that ginger so easily dominates everything else. Dominates just about everything it's in if you're not careful. Because it can, It's a yeah. very overpowering flavor. True. It all. What I found, at least for me, is that it provides kind of an astringent quality. Um, it's very sharp. It's very biting. And it's very aromatic which kind of it just tends to just swamp everything and i think i think the hops you're tasting here i think this i think this is ginger the like i said the aromatics i think that's all ginger i think this is ginger once again dominating the beer now some people like yourself and my (laughs) wife and maybe your wife will enjoy this beer because they enjoy ginger i am not one of those people i'm trying to find the upside here and i think the upside for me for this beer is the bottom, the sweet apple bottom of this beer. Because on the back end of this beer, it's actually pretty pleasant. The back end is the ginger redu- The ginger is very present up front. It fills your mouth, coats your mouth. It's an explosion in your mouth, very Peter North-like. But the <laughs> the back end is where it kind of shines. That's, that's a modern porno reference it's for all the kids. Modern. Yeah. Uh, well, he's one of the more explosive uh, porn stars. <laughs> so let's just put it that way. Yeah. But I think it's the, the, the bottom of this beer that I think is, for me, that's where the highlights are. Yeah, there's a citrusy, appley aftertaste to it yeah. that the that the ginger it's probably kind of, 
probably helps bring out, although you would never admit that. I think that does help it. I mean, a little bit. I think it reminds me of like maybe like an alcoholic juice box, like an al- alcoholic apple juice on the back. Because yeah. uh, it's a little bit hot, like you said. It's got an apple flavor in the back end, and yeah. the ginger tends to recede in the back end. And I think that's where the beer shines for me. I don't enjoy the entire rainbow of this flavor palette. <laughs> yeah. But I think someone who enjoys ginger will love this beer. Now, the negative uh, the negative about it is the ginger part of it, which isn't necessarily too different from a lot of ginger interaction. It's a little bit drying up front, um, which I, I'm not a fan sure. of. That In that way, you you and I both hate the Belgians and the gingers for the same reason, the that they're very quality. drying. Right. Um, so that's why we both curb sm- uh, stomp those guys. Right. But um, Belgian gingers, yeah, yeah. That's, that's if you ever have a ginger Belgian, just watch the oh, fuck out. Oh, yeah. Don't don't look for the, us. If you see us coming, yeah. you better run. You don't expect you better us to survive run. the night. <laughs> you better run quickly. If you end up in a hospital, we're coming to track you down at the hospital. <laughs> oh, we're gonna finish you off. That's yeah. Wait, what is it? Okay, but uh, anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. I, I think the front end, uh, the front end drying, I'm not a not a fan of. Yeah. Uh, but the overall, the overall palate, I think, has a nice citrusy, fruity flavor. I think it has a nice apple flavor, and I think the I think the ginger contributes to that, and yeah, it's yeah. a little hot, but not too hot. It's 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 uh, it's a mellow hot. It's a, it's a it's a warm. It's like a yeah. warm front. It's not a it's not a burning. <laughs> it's not a Texas in August. It's like a Texas in in April. You know, yeah. maybe May. Like right now, it's a little Pleasant warm. Weather. Yeah, it's warm right it's now. Kind of like it's, yourself, it's you're, not burning. It's, you're, it's warm. yeah. It's like yourself. It's like you're not super hot, but you're a mildly attractive person. I'm warm, yeah. yeah you're, I'm warm. you're warmly attractive. Yeah. yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I mean, I'm sitting over here in the you know in the ditches, but that's all right. You're mildly attractive. <laughs> Exactly. Now you were the star of the uh, Goose Island podcast. Uh, everyone know you st- stood up the whole time, and I did. I, d- yeah. I demanded to be the yeah. only one standing. You demanded to be center stage the entire time, <laughs> right? So ratings, ratings, ratings. Uh, I guess I'll go first on this one. Uh, for me, it's not the strong yell like you mentioned before. It's a little more passive than an arrogant bastard. Um, the element that's there, the the hotness of the alcohol is mellowed as well, um, and that's. That may be due to the bourbon barrel aging, although a lot of times the bourbon barrel aging adds a little hotness. I think whatever the combination of things they did here, it's a mellow warm. It's a you have the strong ale base. You have a nice apple finish to it. Uh, the front end, if you're a ginger fan, has that bite that ginger has that I enjoy. And to me, the combo is really good. I like the I like the fruity flavor. I like the ginger spice flavor to it. Um, a little bit of hot alcohol flavor. Or hot alcohol touch. So to me, you put it all together, it makes a great combo, and I would rate this beer a 4.25 out of 5. Excellent. I would buy this again if it was out. So my name for this beer is Catch Me Outside, because <laughs> I feel like it's, I feel like Avery is directly threatening me here. They're confronting me. They're telling me to come outside. We're going to have a street fight. They are, yeah. I'm a ginger. I'm a Belgian. I'm a Belgian ginger. <laughs> we're going to have it out. We're going we're gonna to throw up the Dukes. I'm going to f- stab you with a pitchfork. Somebody's not going to survive this night. Right. However, she is somewhat attractive, this Belgian ginger. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to find the upsides here. Normally like, you think they're ugly, but... Yeah, I, w- I just want to preface this with, again, I hate ginger. That's been clearly defined. Mm-hmm. So, but I will say, for someone, if you enjoy the ginger flavor, like the full rainbow of ginger flavors, you're going to the full flavor of ginger flavors? You know what I mean. Uh, yeah. Whatever. If you enjoy the gingery palates, you'll enjoy this beer. <laughs> I think it's actually quite representative of a Moscow Mule. I feel like not your father's uh, ancient book of uh, recipes that come from 1699 probably will rip off really. this recipe at some point. If yeah. they don't already have a not your father's ginger fart. They do have a ginger par- ale out. Oh, do they? Okay. Yeah. they probably If they were so lucky, they ripped off this recipe. <laughs> I think for those who enjoy Moscow Mules, ginger beers, uh, ginger in general will enjoy this beer quite a bit. It's yeah. not for me because I right. hate ginger. But I will say I found some highlights in the back end and that sweet apple bottom of this beer. As you often do. Yeah. You I enjoy always the find highlights on the bottom. I, that's right, who that's where Mark, Mark goes for the bottom immediately. Who doesn't enjoy the nice, sweet, sweet ass? <laughs> um, I think that's where the, the beer shines. I think if it, for me, my preference would have been if they could make the beer with just a hint of ginger, make yeah. it more like the back, the back end, maybe like a, a, a light apple juice, an alcoholic apple juice, something like that. For me, that would work better because mm-hmm. it's not all out. It's like apple and honey, some malt. Yeah, it's with not a, pure apple. With just yeah. a, just, I just think apple's the problem. Yeah, with just a just an angel's fart of ginger on top in the back end. <laughs> but you know, ginger is what it is. They added it to the brew. It's dominating. It's what I. It is what I expect. As Denny Green once said, "It is what I expected it to be." Right. True. It is what it is. 
I expected it to be a heavy ginger beer. I almost didn't bring it back, but it was named after my friend Dustin. <laughs> but I will give Avery this. They did a pretty damn good job of composing this beer. And even though I hate ginger, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to give this a 4.25 out of 5. Wow. Oh, my God. Giving this a final score of... 4.25 out of 5. That is amazing. I cannot believe that. Uh, look, I think it's I a, figured you'd have it in the twos. I think it's a very well-composed beer for what it is. Nice. And I'm not going to give... I mean, unlike some other shows, I'm not going to base my entire opinion based on just my personal palate. I'm trying, sure. I'm trying to course correct for my deficiencies, if you want to call them that, the fact that I hate ginger. Sure. That's fair enough. I do the same thing when we drink yeah. certain lagers and stuff like that. I try to I try to put it in the category. Yeah. And how does it rate? So, yep, fair enough. I mean, it, do, that's, it doesn't necessarily fall within the strong ale category because there's no IBU. There's, you know, it's, uh, I think yeah. it almost falls in there, but I don't necessarily care about that as much as, yeah. as is it a good beer. Right. And I think for those who enjoy ginger, you're going to really, really enjoy this beer. Yeah. It's really, really good for those of you who enjoy that. That's just not me. Sure. I would not. If somebody offered me this beer, I might drink it. Yeah. I'm definitely not going to buy it again, but that's just because of ginger. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, yep. it's a really, really good, it's a well-composed beer. It transforms in your mouth. There's that explosion of flavor, <laughs> that Peter North of explosion in your face. That's, and then it transforms. That's your favorite part. It dribbles down your throat. Yeah. You know. But wait, it, that's your least favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> it, but yeah, I, I was very pleasantly surprised by this beer, so. Well, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with that rating. I'm impressed with your ability to... Uh, be a real good, solid beer podcaster and fight through your own uh, hatred and rate it properly. This is why we're the number, the uh, world's number one beer podcast. That's true. We definitely are. There's no doubt about it. So catch us outside. How about that? Argue us. <laughs> Show me proof we're not. Well, thanks for listening to episode 99 of Brew Bloods. Next week, I will say that we have something very special coming up. We're going to go we're, almost, we're going to go full circle. We're, we're going, going triple digits next We're going to go back to our halcyon days of where we started. Something very you special. You going to promote that up. now? Yeah, I'm just, just teasing ahead. Tease it. Tease it. I, I'm teasing you. I'm going to tease. I'm going to, I'm going to. You're going to tease and actually say what it is? Yeah. Uh, no. I'm no, just teasing okay. ahead. I'm saying something very special. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to flick your nipple <laughs> just a little bit. We'll go back and look at episode one. You'll get an idea. You'll get an idea of where we're going. Exactly. Uh, thanks for listening to the show. Thanks for all your support. If you like the show, you might like our other show that we do randomly probably once every half year now called The Break Room. You can find that at yeah. TV. It's very unimportant. Uh, listen, us, listen to the show. Check us out on the social networks, <laughs> Tumblr, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. If you have any feedback on the show, you can email us at brewbloodshow at gmail.com. You can call us 469-573-BEER. It's 469-573-2337. And you can always go to reddit, reddit.com slash r slash brewbloods. Why wouldn't you? Why go there. You? Exactly. Be one of the non-Reddit trolls and go there and help yeah. us out. Go ask some good constructive questions. Absolutely, yes. Yes. And uh, not not just Reddit in general. Facebook, too. Facebook, uh, don't, you know. be, don't be an ass on Facebook. <laughs> exactly. Don't be a nut kicker. <laughs> Please don't, yes. Yeah. Don't be drained, poor guy. <laughs> All so, right. uh, for Mark, I'm Dustin. And for Dustin and Mark, we'll catch you guys next week for episode 100 of Brew Bloods. Probes. Probes. Probes.